Hey everyone, we're with the performance-based instructional design class and we did our abstract on motion. My name is Jessica Gunnels. My name is Connor Rawls. I'm Alex Jordan. This is our abstract. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a gap in teaching experiences and internships due to the disruption of education at large. Our work with Mergen has bridged this gap of giving us some experience over none as all as pre-service teachers. It created a virtual outlet for gaining experience that allowed for us to communicate with potential students and others in our learning community. We got to teach lessons that pertain to our field and plan ahead how we would want to run our classroom. It gave us pre-service teachers a way to bridge the educational gap. The purpose of this poster is to show the benefits and drawbacks of the immersion program as a real world equivalent for future teachers. We examine the differences between virtual experience and from in-person learning and teaching. This program was created to adapt to the changes from the pandemic by bring, bridging the technological world with learning and with teaching in the classroom. And our findings were interesting. If immersion is to be continued in a post-COVID learning experience, it really has to come to grips with the realities of virtual intelligences versus real students. A broadening of responses and content areas are needed, introduction of different avatars that don't fit stereotypical beliefs of what students are, and an expanding of other experiences not relating directly to teaching or classroom management. The program might be a truly good tool, uh, tool for students in the early stages of the teacher education program, but if it doesn't rapidly advance, it runs the risk of doing more damage to the expectations and practices then it actually will help. Education might be a question of what to teach and why, but to be a good teacher requires one to be more than just a shepherd of a room of artificial students, as they will invariably pale in comparison to the sheer diversity and vibrancy of a real classroom with real students. Um, one of our findings was that teachers can alter lesson plans on the fly in the real life, but cannot immersion. And this comes also from different programs that immersion um, requires, but we also couldn't adapt full, or we can also adapt fully when we're in person in the classroom, but not as well immersion. We also found that blind spots in the immersion program as only approved content was allowed to be responded to. If we attempted to do anything that the avatars were unable to respond to, they would simply just say, we are not allowed to do that. And further than that, we also had a uh, interesting feature that was done very thoughtfully on the part of immersion, but it was the pause feature. In this, it's fine. Immersion, I'm sure it's great to have a pause feature to mess out with the bugs and talk to someone about the program. But in real life, there's no pause feature. And on top of that, the idea that we think we can take a break in the middle of teaching a student, that's it's not realistic. And it also, again, going back to earlier, runs the risk of making a bad expectation for new students. And one of our other findings was that it tried to represent a lot of stereotypical students um, through the avatars. And so you saw a lot of different types of students that represented a lot of stereotypes that you get as normal teachers. One of the main positives that we found is that COVID has restricted all teachers from field experience while immersion allows for contactless teaching. Through this, teachers do not have to worry about putting themselves at risk by going into real classrooms, or they don't have to also worry about putting any real students at risk by going into physical classrooms. Um. Another one, kind of like a, a end cap and something that really, it's a larger conversation and I'm sure we'll have that at one point, but non-teaching interactions need to be included. Like, well, they are included, but they need to be kind of widened. And uh, the parent teach conferences and the meetings that they have are great, but until that reflects a more realistic, more expanded repertoire, we're going to be stunted to only a few little options. It needs to be a large expansion before we actually move out and say, this is good for students and this is good for teachers. Um, I learned a lot from my personal immersion experience. Um, I thought that it was good to be able to communicate even if it wasn't the same as being in a real classroom. Um, even though it had its shortcomings, I am grateful for the fact that it gave us some experience before entering the field rather than none at all. Um, and so even though it did have those blind spots, we did find that any communication and any experience at all is better than none. I agree with Jessica. It did give us a lot more. It also gave us a lot of variety in terms of uh, scenarios to go through, uh, not just having to teach a class, but also having to deal with things such as parent teacher conferences and meetings, uh, as well as having to deal with more uh, unruly students as such gives the uh, user of immersion a much more diverse uh, experience to what a real teacher would have to experience. So well, I guess 
I was gonna, I'll say this, Jessica. Uh, I'm gonna be the stickler here. I'm gonna go the other way and say that I didn't care for this. Uh, immersion allowed me to have experience, yes, but that experience was done because of extraneous circumstances. Like COVID popped up, no one expected it. I was able to have use immersion to experience anything at all, which is great. But I also had to run into the fact where it's, I'm teaching these virtual students a lesson that I did not create with no lesson plan going ahead into it other than just knowing what the conversations was about. And on top of that, every student interaction I had felt canned. It just didn't feel real. Like it felt like there was, it was gonna be, it was by the numbers. I was watching a movie that I was part of and I was going through it. And I suppose my final critique of it, if I were going to be philosophical, I suppose, would be, what are we really saying here? If someone came up to either one of us or anyone in the teaching profession and said, teachers can be replaced with computers, we would all be upset. We would also have like diatribes about how to defend ourselves. Well, this time they didn't come up and say to the teachers, they came up and said, your students are effectively replaceable with you know, virtual intelligence. I don't like the ramifications of saying that at any level but that's just my opinion. I think overall, even with immersion shortcomings, we learned that um, as the world gets more technologically advanced, it is important to have these things that also develop with education, including this technological program. Um, and we just wanna thank you for listening to us today about our project um, with immersion, and we hope that you learned a lot and maybe you'll get to experience immersion um, sometime soon yourself.